Bad medical advice? Rich, neglectful parents? Coco Melon has a lot more going on under the surface than children realize. Although many kids excitedly shriek Coco Melon at the screen every time they see those two front teeth and that single blonde swirl, Coco Melon is actually the name of the YouTube channel and streaming show. The kids are on the right track, as the blonde baby is the main character and his face has become synonymous with the show. But hordes of toddlers around the world have been surprised to learn that his name is actually JJ. The confusion is completely warranted, considering the titles of many popular kids' shows are simply the name of the main character. Bluey, Peppa Pig, Winnie the Pooh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, and Arthur are just a few examples. JJ, his mommy, daddy, his sister Yo-Yo, his brother Tom Tom, and a slew of other friends, family, and animals collectively make up the world of Coco Melon. Granted, many parents are confused by this as well, but the fact that multiple videos that only featured animals were also titled Coco Melon became the dead giveaway. Questions about the name were raised and ultimately answered with songs like the Potty Training Song, where the family specifically says, Great job, JJ! And of course, there's the JJ song itself. This one seems to affect parents in a big way. Throughout the entire Coco Melon catalog, JJ displays the broadest spectrum of cognitive abilities. While enjoying the show, it will be near impossible for toddlers to pick up on the timing of developmental stages. However, parents are increasingly more aware of the many leaps their children should be making around certain ages. The Huffington Post gathered numerous parental tweets about Coco Melon, and many call out JJ's extraordinary abilities in a big way. JJ's actual age has been estimated at anywhere from 1 to 4 years old, but in some cases, his intelligence would place him lower than a 1-year-old and in others a lot higher than the average four-year-old. In the episode Baby Bump, JJ and his best friend Cody act as detectives and uncover clues like a rattle, a pacifier, and a baby bottle to come to the conclusion that Cody's mom must be pregnant. In the episode Humpty Dumpty, JJ giggles and babbles like a baby, but also engineers a parachute for an egg in an egg drop experiment. Mommy and Daddy's income is hopefully something that a show's younger viewers don't have to think about. Even so, after scoping the family's house and the laundry list of fun activities they're able to do with the kids, more than a few older viewers have started wondering how JJ's parents are able to afford their lavish lifestyle. Parents in the audience have discussed the house itself, since the color, furniture, and overall layout of each room changes song to song. In the parents' version of the song Johnny Johnny Yes Papa, the parents are seen in a quaint kitchen with pictures of vegetables decorating the walls. Put in Patter Cake 2, the family walks into a bright yellow beehive kitchen. The initial version of Johnny Johnny Yes Papa shows a third version of their kitchen, which raises the question, is this family that well off, or are they good friends with Chip and Joanna Gaines? Took it out 100%, zero breaks. This is nice. With childcare at the forefront of any parent's mind, even the cost of JJ's pristine preschool, the Melon Patch Academy, has been called into question. Not that JJ's parents need to explain themselves, but their jobs are never mentioned, and they always seem to have ample time off to play with the kids. Judging other parents' child rearing? Now that's something every parent can get behind. Oh, you are not telling me how to raise my child! You do not tell this woman how to raise her child! You do not tell her how to raise me! Kids definitely wouldn't notice this, and even if they did, they'd most likely be a little jealous of JJ and his siblings' freedom. With the children being left unattended, bouncing around town without parental supervision, it's easy for any parent to wonder about the lackadaisical rules in this family's household. The car wash song video, for example, suggests that a preschool trio can wash a car unattended. The whole thing will strike any parent viewing as even more irresponsible when they notice that the kids are doing this only steps away from a busy road with double solid yellow lines. On a similar note, in the breakfast song, the children concoct giant and healthy breakfast consisting entirely of pancakes, syrup, waffles, whipped cream, bacon, ham, and white bread with jam. It's all fried up on a hot stove with zero parental supervision. Many of the things only parents notice about Coco Melon are nitpicks within the world of the show, but they aren't all bad. For example, there's a Coco Melon rendition of the classic song Patter Cake, which has educated many parents who grew up singing it as Patty Cake. Or of course, other kids and parents may have only ever heard the song as Patter Cake. But for those who have been singing Patty Cake all along, you can take comfort in the fact that this pronunciation is very common and widely accepted as well. Patter Cake vs. Patty Cake has been debated for decades, but experts like Soon Michaud, a Gullah language teacher from Harvard University, claim that pate was pronounced patty in different languages and dialects. As long as the cake makers in question mold it, pat it, and mark it with a B, it seems both pronunciations have some merit. 
Coco Melon has served up fresh renditions of a lot of nursery rhymes, some of which they've opted to put their own unique spin on. When children like a song, they don't question its origins. However, parents tuning into Coco Melon will be likely to notice distinct similarities with songs that they, their parents, and even their grandparents grew up with. Winter Show and Tell at School is sung to the tune of On the First Day of Christmas. Bath Song is the most popular video on the Coco Melon channel, with nearly 5.8 billion views. While it has original lyrics, the verse is sung to the tune of Itsy Bitsy Spider, and the chorus has the same melody as Baby Shark. Children's songs performed to the tune of classic nursery rhymes are actually quite common. Some of our most well-known nursery rhymes like ABC, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and Bar Bar Black Sheep are actually all sung in the same tune and tempo. Posed by Mozart, all share the common ancestor of a hit 1740 French folk song. Much like a movie or TV character watching a movie or TV show from several decades ago, current children's songs that use classic nursery rhymes are more often than not doing so to avoid copyright infringement, not to mention that it helps the new song's chances of success. The classics are classics for a reason. While your child blankly stares at the screen with their jaw on the floor, you can rest assured they're not counting the seconds of each shot. For parents who are trying to find the proper balance between entertaining their children and melting their brains, the pace of a show has become very important. There is no shortage of new shows vying for the attention of young viewers, but when parents and experts are asked if Coco Melon specifically is safe or hyper-stimulating for children, the answer seems to be split right down the middle. For comparison, a TikTok user clocked My Little Pony shots as lasting 4 to 6 seconds each. Each Coco Melon shot, on the other hand, only lasts 1 to 3 seconds in length. This video, as well as a follow-up video showing that nearly every Coco Melon shot either zooms in or out or pans side to side, inspired over 300 parents to weigh in on the parenting subreddit. Many commented that their children watched the show obsessively and would become unusually upset after it was turned off. Dr. Rebecca G. Cowan, a professor of social and behavioral sciences at Walden University, told Parenting.com, Without some empirical research on the show Coco Melon, there is no data to substantiate claims that this show is overstimulating due to the pace of the scenes. It seems that until more structured research is performed, it will be up to parents whether or not it's healthy for their children to view the show. For the average young viewer, it's unlikely that children will pick up the subtle nuances of a couple's relationship in a TV show or YouTube video. After watching the video for the parents' version of Johnny Johnny Yes Papa, it isn't hard for any adult viewer to pick up on the sneaking around, the distrust, the judgment, and the outright lying present in the clip. The video opens on the father sneaking into the kitchen in the middle of the night for a slice of pizza. The mother then flicks on the lights and judges him as if he's straying from their strict diet. The father then catches and judges her for enjoying some ice cream. It gets a tad off-putting when they both lie about it twice, and ultimately need to open their mouths to expose the lie. Coco Melon's first version of Johnny Johnny Yes Papa is more true to form with JJ playing Johnny, getting caught eating sugar, and lying about it. The father finds it cute that JJ says he wasn't eating sugar when he clearly has some in his mouth. But the cuteness just isn't there when the parents treat each other like children. Young viewers clearly don't have too critical of an outlook toward media yet, because they seem to be all in on the many characters of Coco Melon. However, many parents have to admit being completely creeped out by the slightly haunting, almost Chucky-like facial expressions of these characters. <laughs> I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. For a little over a year, Collider contributor Matt Rooney lived with his brother, his brother's partner, and their first child. After being exposed to countless hours of Coco Melon, he reported, It's the animation that will plague your dreams. Soulless eyes and smiles of equal shape beam off the screen as if to ask, Can I be your friend forever and ever and ever and ever? Caricatures seemingly built to mock the human form, the key family of five are stiff and off-putting, and able to cause instant delirium to those who look upon them. Thanks to films like The Exorcist, The Shining, Children of the Corn, and The Ring, there is no shortage of horror movies involving creepy children. At this point, the concept is basically its own horror subgenre. For this reason, many adults find something terrifying about Coco Melon's and canny, lifeless smiles. While it's innocent enough to keep children from running for the hills, something about the show's imagery wouldn't feel out of place in a contemporary horror movie. When a toddler gets a boo-boo, they usually want no part in the washing and dressing of the wound. But the parents know an infection could set in quickly. In looking over the few instances of first aid in Coco Melon, it doesn't take a medical professional to see the issues. Dr. Mike Varshavsky, a board-certified family medicine practitioner and the number one health and medicine influencer on YouTube, 
reviewed the Boo Boo song. He noticed that when Cody falls and scrapes his knee, his mother simply puts a bandage over it without washing or disinfecting the wound. Other red flags from Coco Melon's depiction of medical care include putting a bandage on a stubbed toe and listening to a patient's lungs from the front instead of the back. The most egregious mistake of all, though, is the use of an artoscope, the very pointy tool used to examine the patient's ear on the patient's eye. Dr. Mike warns viewers to use a very flat ophthalmoscope for eye inspections and stating, if you do that on a medical standardized exam, you would fail. Additionally, when JJ gets sick in Sick Song, his parents care for him. When his mom sneezes at the end of the video, JJ and his father laugh. Parents everywhere will tell you how often they've been sick because of their kids and will not laugh along with this. 